So, the next important thing is monitoring the response of treatment because you already do not have a microbiologically confirmed extra pulmonary TB, how will you monitor? Because there is no way of monitoring them through a microbiological response. So, we have to use our clinical knowledge and radiological improvement as a better way. So, clinically every month you should see to that you monitor him on what is his weight, whether there is an increase of weight, whether his fever has settled, he is clinically better, that is he, his appetite is good, he is very active and whether he is size of his lesion has started reducing. Let us say a patient had a cervical node, whether the pain in the cervical node is reducing, the size is reducing the patient is looking at an improvement. Similarly, there are other methods like radiological improvement, especially if you have a patient who has a spinal or a TB with the bone joint involvement, you can do all radiological methods like x-ray, you can take even a MRI or a CT scan to follow up your monitoring response. Whether the cold abscess is reducing, the inflammation in the bone is reducing, all these things can be looked at. The next important thing is when do you say it is a definitive cure, right? It is difficult to define a cure because we do not have microbiological confirm. All you have to base is on good radiological methods and good clinical acumen on how the patient is responding to your therapy. Then evaluation depends upon why each one it is very different. So, according to the site we differ. Let us say a patient has abdominal TB with nodes in the abdomen with mild ascites. You have to follow up with an ultrasound looking at how his ascites has reduced, how his abdominal parahyatic and perihepatic nodes have reduced. So, how is his symptomatology, how is his appetite, all these things will be a better clue. And let us say a patient had some main, some subacute intestinal obstruction whether he has a good improvement on the uh, intestinal obstruction, whether his diarrhea is settled, all these things is site specific. Similarly, the severity of the disease we have to assess. So, let us say a patient has been bedridden for a spinal TB and if the patient tries to walk and he is improving, then we know that the severity of the disease is over. Similarly, when a patient who had a a epilepsy at the diagnosis of a tuberculoma, if his epilepsy episodes have not come for the next 6 months, then we are sure that the tuberculoma has responded. Similarly, the ease of obtaining a specimen. Let us say if you have a patient who has a cold abscess in the neck and let us say you uh, initially in the cold abscess there was acid fast basal being demonstrated and the next aspirate even if you do a culture from the cold abscess there is no growth then you are very definitive that the patient has responded well to a therapy ok. So, how do you monitor? Normally we monitor ocular TB by what is the response within 3 months of therapy ok. So, we are very definitive that once the inflammation in the eye is reducing and the ophthalmologist could look at whether the vitreous lesions and the retinal lesions have started disappearing, we are very definite. Similarly, TB meningitis, we normally look it after 8 weeks on how the response is. But most of the TB meningitis, we always follow them up for 2 years because some of them can develop a relapse. So, it is very important in the national program that we follow all our TB cases for the next 2 years, even after the treatment completion. Similarly, CNS tuberculoma, you have to have a good response within 3 months to 6 months. So, you will follow it up with a CT or an MRI looking at whether the size of the tuberculoma is reduced and the inflammation or the edema is reduced and the patient is not having any sequelae like epilepsy or you let us say you had a monoparesis, the monoparesis improved, then we are very definitive that the tuberculoma has responded. Lymph node TB similarly, 
you can have a node even persisting after 6 months of therapy, but depending upon the size, the site, we can decide on whether the response is good. Let us say you have a node which is not painful and it is less than 1, one centimeter in size after 4 months of therapy, we can be very definitive that the node is a good node which has responded. But let us say the largest node in that area is more than 1 centimeter and it is a little painful and all those things. Then we have to extend our therapy by another 3 to 6 months and sometimes you can need to do a excision biopsy and even try to remove the node as a curative therapy and continue with the ATT. So, that is the way we have. Similarly, cutaneous TB, we have a good response very quickly because the yeah, acid fast bacilli load is very less, even 4 to 6 weeks there will be good response. Plural TB, we always follow it up with the 2 months of 8 weeks after therapy, we check an x-ray chest and see how the response is there. TB pericarditis, we always follow with the echo looking at whether the patient is trying to develop a constrictive pericarditis. The response is always good within the next 4 months. Abdominal TB similarly within 3 to 6 months you will have good response. Urogenital TB you will have within 8 weeks and femogenital TB we have to look at after 6 months. Spinal TB is the most important thing which we have to keep on assessing. The response will be not immediate after 2 months always you have to see it after 5 months and during the 3 months follow up of our ATT, we have to assess the radiological clearing by an x-ray. Let us say the spinal space has been reduced, what happened to the wedging, whether the wedging is happening or is calcification or let us say we do an MRI, we have to treat 3, 6, 9 and 12 months, we have to follow how far the cold abscess is reduced, the periregional edema is reduced or the spinal lesion is reduced. So, everything we have to follow it up even after 2 years. So, what is approach to a non-response? How will you know that there is a non-response? So, you have to first evaluate whether he is following your treatment, whether he is adherent to your therapy. So, do not at once jump it is might be a treatment failure. So, you have to get some good history from him whether he is adhering to his therapy by taking a regimen daily at the proper time and all the drugs at the same time. Most of the patient will take, let us say we give a fixed dose drug combination, he will take one in the morning, one in the afternoon and one at night. And if you space the drugs, the efficacy of the drug is going to become lesser because we would have not attained the MIC, the maximal inhibitory concentration. So, that is why the patient is not responding. Okay? Then you have to rule out whether it is not a TB itself. So, let us say we have no response, we have to re-evaluate him, look whether it is a TB case or a non-TB case. Then the most important thing is paradoxical reaction because some of them which I will be telling you in the next slide can develop a paradoxical because of the dysregulation of our immune system because we had a very immune weak system before. right? Then the last and important thing might be a drug resistance. So, do not jump to drug resistance immediately. So, these are the first pathway you have to assess. First look at whether he is taking his drug regimen properly. Next we evaluate him whether you are really TB with the TB patient. Fourth look at paradoxical reaction where in the early stages of the therapy that is in the first 3 months if it happens and the fifth should be the drug resistance. So, what is paradoxical reaction? Patient who is on anti-TB drugs when he was very immune weak, especially now the most important group is HIV positive, but it can happen in all patients who are immune weak. So, they will have initially improved, then they are worsening of their constitutional symptom and you can develop even new lesions. right? especially you can have an increase in the size of lesion, especially in tubercloma, you have a patient who had a tubercloma, after 10 days he might develop a, after a month he might develop a fits and if you repeat the CT, you will see periregional edema around the tubercloma. This is a 
immune reconstitution where you will have a paradoxical reaction. Some of them can even have a new lesion coming up where you call it as a daughter's lesion. So, it will be very common even in pulmonary TB where you will have a new lesion coming up. So, that does not mean that he is still resistant. So, you have to if he has done very well initially we have to consider it. So, this will be very common during the first few months only. So, maybe after 3 months you have a new lesion you have to suspect resistance. But let us say if it happens within 2 to 3 months of therapy you need to still suspect it might be a paradoxical reaction. So, it occurs very early and there is no evidence for other diagnosis you will always like resistance or no compliance problem you will always suspect it is a paradoxical reaction. So, excessive immune response to a mycobacterial antigen when an effective anti TB regimen is involving dysregulation in the innate or the acquired immune immunity. So, management is to continue the anti TB drugs you can give non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like uh, ibuprofen or you can give even uh, diclofenac for reducing the inflammation and steroids do have a role when you have very severe forms where you have some problem of let us say a patient has a node which is opening up very largely and producing him severe pain you can give steroids. Similarly, patients who have a tuberculoma which has a new epilepsy coming up you can give him steroids. So, which will reduce the inflammation the duration will be for 4 weeks and though slowly titrate it off. So, what are the key messages which we want to tell you is right the treatment of extra pulmonary TB is not very different from pulmonary TB, but the challenges are the duration of therapy is very important. So, you have to decide according to the clinical improvement how many months of therapy you have to continue as a continuation phase. Then the treatment regimen should be as same as for pulmonary TB. The duration of treatment can be from 6 months you can extend it to up to 9 to 12 months. The corticosteroids have a role in CNS TB especially it is proven. So, all your patients with TB meningitis should have corticosteroids during the first 4 weeks and then taper it off within the next 4 weeks. Surgery is indicated in some of your cases especially when you have strictures like in uh, abdominal or in urogenital. Similarly, when you have CNS TB with hydrocephalus being developing. Similarly, when you have pericardial effusion leading on to a patient who is going to develop a constrictive pericarditis and in ENT when you have a parapharyngeal abscess you have to definitely drain it and ocular TB. Paradoxical reaction has to be considered in assessing your response to any treatment with TB especially within the first 3 months where you have initially good clinical response and the patient is doing well, but there is a marked problem of increasing in problem of the lesion you will still consider paradoxical reaction if the patient has been taking the therapy very properly and you are very sure he has had a good therapy. And monitoring response to treatment is mainly by clinical evaluation. Thank you.